Welcome everyone. My name is Tracy Webb. I'm the Learning Technology Team Manager at Bournemouth University. I'm Oliver Moore, a Digital Learning Assistant at Bournemouth University. We are part of the Fusion Learning Innovation and Excellence team here at BU, or FLY for short. And we have a relatively small team who support academic staff in the design and delivery of innovative education practice. Um, so the team is made up of some learning technologists and also some academic staff. So today we want to talk to you about how our learning technology team went about creating an escape room experience for our Fusion Learning Conference last summer. So what was our driver? At BU we have a pedagogical innovation lab, which is a very big name for a selection of equipment that we purchase via an internal digital enablers fund. So some examples of the tech we purchase include um, mobile eye tracking glasses, some 360 degree cameras, and some VR Quest headsets. This equipment was procured just prior to lockdown. So we had all this great stuff and we wanted to reinvigorate interest in the tools and remind staff at BU what we had and how they could use it with their students or in their teaching practice. So we came up with the idea of an escape room. Um, we were going to incorporate some online as well as classroom activities. So the goal was to showcase the various digital tools and technologies available and to inspire staff to create their own escape rooms or immersive learning scenarios off the back of it. We felt it would be an active and engaging way to demonstrate the capabilities of the tools and make the content relatable and also highlight the potential of digital tools in education generally. And we also wanted to showcase some of the VLE's functionality. We have Brightspace here at Bournemouth, so we scaffolded the escape room through Brightspace and that also enabled us to introduce other digital tools that we were piloting at the time, um, such as H5P. So, the narrative. Narrative is a really crucial tool in the development of learning materials, but in particular escape rooms. Um, it's probably fairly understood that storytelling has been a mode of education, arguably since education began. Um, well, our narrative in this case was uh, there to provide a context of consistency for the exploration of those digital tools. Why are they using these tools and what for in the task? The narrative needed to make sense flowing from one puzzle to the next and that way it would provide a clear path for the player to take which would hopefully, given the context, invoke an emotive response. Um, I think it's pretty crucial in escape rooms that what you're doing makes sense because your role as an escape room developer is to ensure that they're given, that each player is given everything they need to accomplish the task, and that can include a sense of narrative consistency. It's critical to maintain engagement and immersion in the game, because if things stop making sense, they break out of that sense of immersion. Um, for us, we really decided to lean into the hot topic discussion of the impact of AI on education that arose last year. This helped make the setting re relevant and relatable and ad allowed us to make some sort of more nuanced jokes that people could pick up on. So to give you an idea of the context of our story so that the puzzles in the following slides make sense, in a nutshell, the story of our room was that a new iteration of ChatGPT called GPT Omega, or Geppetto for short, went rogue. This a rogue AI has taken over a decommissioned satellite orbiting Earth with the malintent to redirect it back into the Earth's atmosphere into a nuclear power station and cause nuclear fallout. So the players had a limited time to regain control of the situation and prevent global disaster. One of the tools we wanted to introduce were AI generated videos with avatars. So we used these to at, to set the mission briefs at each stage. So once the task had been completed, um, a new, new avatar would introduce a new task to them. We were trialling HeyGen at the time and also another product called Synthesia to do this. And actually we've had a lot of use within um, teaching since um, trialling them. We also use these to promote the event um, and we wanted to kind of encourage people to come not just to the conference but come to our escape room um, and we started to build tension as part of the content strategy with these avatars. My name is Agent Fly from the Office of Global Security. We have been made aware of an impending threat from the artificial intelligence entity GPT Omega, known colloquially as Geppetto. 
We need your help to neutralize this risk by joining our escape room at the Fusion Learning Conference on Wednesday, July 5th. Come to FG04 at 1.45 p.m. on the day to receive your full mission briefing. Agent Fly, signing off. The first task revolved around the use of a 360-degree camera. The puzzle that the players had to solve was that they had been locked out of the computer system by Geppetto and had to solve a riddle left by the security team. They needed to access the live CCTV footage from the security team's office and solve a riddle in order to regain access. For this, we used the live sync feature between a mobile phone and the Insta360 camera, which most 360-degree cameras come with an app that they use to remote uh, access the photos um, on that you can use on a mobile device. So the idea here was that the camera would reveal a riddle, but unfortunately what we found was that the quality of the live sync feature on the phone wasn't as clear as the photos that the device actually took. So this sort of ended up leading us to require the participant, the participants had to get up and read the board manually. Um, it was a good first ta task in the end as it got them on their feet. Um, but once they uh, found the riddle, um, they would then decipher it and it would be, be entered into the VLE on a quiz that triggered the next stage. So task two was about accessing the computer system um, unlocked by a robot. So the players used the robot to remotely explore the office of a colleague who had gone missing. They were looking for clues for launch sites. Um, so essentially they had to find the cupboard with the VR equipment in so they could go on to the next stage. So for this we used a tool called Cooler. Uh, Cooler is a virtual tour software. So we took a 360 photo of the room and we simply added interactive hotspots which were attached to cupboards, drawers, desk monitors um, and that was how we facilitated giving them the clues. Some of the clues uh, were red herrings. We didn't want to make it too easy for them, but it was quite fun for them to open all the covers and work, work their way around the room that way. Unfortunately, they were a bit late for one of their office colleagues. Um, this is Scott, one of the LTs. I can confirm he is alive and well. Look, photographic proof. There he is in the corner there. He's still alive, we promise. The third task revolved around using the VR equipment that had now been magically delivered via plot device. Uh, they would use this VR to scope the potential launch sites that they had found on Cooler to determine which one was the correct one. On Google Earth VR, they could use Street View to explore these three locations. Two of them were very urban and one was quite obviously rural and remote. The idea here being that it was outside of the rogue AI's data reach. And this is how they determined which one was, which ones were the red herrings. The correct site was then input via another quiz, which mimicked an email to the government. And this activated the final puzzle. So the final task was using H5P. The players had to decrypt the launch code that had been sent to them by the government in order to successfully launch the counter-missile attack to stop the AI-controlled satellite crashing to Earth. For this, we used the H5P content authoring tool. We were piloting the tool, so this was in a way as much test for us of its capabilities as it was for exploring how it would be used by um, our academics. We used the image juxtaposition content type to create our encryption puzzle. And for this, I custom made images using Microsoft PowerPoint, which has some quite potent image overlay tools and quite some, and some quite powerful image editing capabilities. So definitely uh, suggest exploring those. Um, and let's see if you guys can work out the answer from the puzzle that we made. So for those of you that didn't get the answer, uh, it was no strings. So we scaffolded the whole escape room experience via Brightspace, which is our VLE. Um, and we used that to structure the content and stagger the release of the different tasks um, and to receive the feedback. 
So we use this with the release conditions, so you can set restrictions on um, basically completion of another task, and that would open up the next stage for people. Um, that was quite a lot of work involved with that because um, we, as we said, we did create a lot of graphics for this. So we also had to create sort of graphics for dead ends. So when people were wrong, um, keeping in the theme, we had some error messages and things that we came in, in the feedback. A lot of the customized feedback was done via our, the quiz tool on Brightspace. Um, so we, again, we were incorporating those images to deliver the key messages and direct people if they were wrong or move them on to the next stage. And then at the end, uh, on completion of the escape room, everybody was automatically awarded an online badge. So mission debrief, was it actually a success in the end? Well, we had lots of interest on the day, a really good energy in the room, which was great to see. The participants definitely remained engaged. Um, they actually became quite competitive. Uh, at one point we had two teams kind of running the escape room next to each other um, and they were quite competitive with each other but in a, in a really fun way. We genuinely felt that the escape room model provided a really kind of fun but safe space for the participants so it didn't matter if you got things wrong, um, you could fail if you struggled with the equipment. We had LTs in the room to support with that so it felt like a very nice learning space for that. We definitely achieved our aim of having staff hands-on with the equipment um, getting them to understand how to use it, both technically and also helping them to think pedagogically about how they might want to use these tools going forward. It was the first time we'd done something like this. Uh, there were some limitations with some of the equipment in a group setting. Um, so, for example, the size of the room did limit how many participants could be using a VR headset at once. So that was something we, we would think about again. Um, Actually, we didn't design it as a group exercise. It was planned more as an individual linear exercise. Um, but on the day, we had a lot of people, so we ended up having a couple of groups going around. And having said that, I think it worked really well with the two groups completing at the same time because they were actively discussing the tools and the capabilities um, and really also being immersed in the game. From a learning technologist point of view, it was very time intensive to create the escape room. But it was so much fun for us as educators coming up with the ideas, um, thinking of the red herrings, thinking of the messaging and the images that we were going to put in. We really also loved it when the participants recognised some of our more niche jokes and the little nuances that we'd added in. One person turned out to be a really big 2001 Space Odyssey fan, um, so we made his day anyway. Although I would say I still don't get enough credit for the villainous name of Geppetto. <laughs> GPTO, Geppetto. Come on, guys. We also created a debrief module on Brightspace so that staff could follow our creative process and understand how each task was built and created. Um, and within that, we incorporated links off to further guidance. And that Brightspace unit remains as a reference point for anyone going forward who wants to look at that. So hopefully... Our staff will be inspired to create their own experiences down the line um, and they can come back and just revisit some of that and have a little reminder of how they might want to do things. I think my biggest piece of advice for people creating escape rooms, particularly online if they're going to be quite linear, which when they're online they often have to be, um, it's to reverse engineer it, work backwards. You know what? So create your setting, what's the story going to be, and then... From there, you have to say, okay, well, how? what puzzle am I going to build behind them getting to the last the last element so how do they succeed what's the puzzle there and then work out what you need to accomplish that puzzle and then just work backwards through each puzzle that's the best advice i could give for developing escape rooms yeah and i think the theme was critical and all the lts involved with building out this escape room were totally um, involved with each stage and understanding what was required at each stage what the theme was but what the technology was as well um, so i think that was critical in it being successful too well, we hope this has been interesting. Um, yeah, and I hope we've inspired you to maybe um, look at some of this stuff yourself. So thank you for your time. And remember, remain vigilant against the threat of AI.